Website Traffic 101 Building a successful website and generating lots of steady traffic has a ton of amazing benefits. For one, it means money. If you run a business, then traffic means customers, and customers mean income. A steady stream of visitors can mean the difference between stagnation and massive growth. For bloggers, website traffic means a chance to make a living doing what they love. And even if you don't choose to monetize those visitors, you can still gain a lot of satisfaction and pleasure knowing that you have a dedicated readership. The only problem? Getting to that point in the first place. This series of presentations will help you to do just that. But first, let's start with the basics. The Foundation Before you begin to build traffic and drive thousands of visitors a day to your site, you first need to think about how you are going to build a solid foundation for your online brand. This is crucial because people ultimately won't come back to a website unless it offers them something of value. That means the site needs to be high quality in terms of the content it offers and in terms of the production values and polish. We could go into a lot of detail here describing how to offer value but it tends to come down to just one key factor. You need to have passion for what you are doing. You need to love doing it, and you need to really understand the niche. The Basics of Internet Marketing It's from that strong foundation that you can begin your internet marketing activities. This will broadly be split into several easy categories. SEO, or Search Engine Optimization, Social Media Marketing, email marketing, influencer marketing, content marketing. We'll be discussing these more in future presentations, but for now, all you need to know is that you need to fill your website with high-quality, regular content and include key words where possible, subtly. You should be present on every form of social media possible, and you should use that in order to share and promote the posts you create. Finally, Email marketing is what you'll use to collect the emails of your visitors so that you can bring them back and market to them in the future. But nothing is more important than making sure those posts are high quality to begin with. Without that, you'll simply be spamming. How to Craft Effective Facebook Ad Copy That Converts There is no question that Facebook ads can work highly effectively. This has been proven time and again by countless marketers who have used the platform to form the backbone of their campaigns. But while Facebook ads can work, they don't always. Whether or not they work in practice, you see, all comes down to how well the campaign has been designed, how targeted the ads are, and how well written the copy is. In this presentation, you'll learn how to handle the latter aspect of your campaign. Highly Converting Ad Copy The key to good Facebook ad copy is to be highly efficient with your choice of words. You need to not only grab attention, but also persuade your audience in a very limited word budget. But at the same time, you also need to recognize that the key isn't just to get clicks. In fact, good Facebook ad copy should reject some visitors in order to avoid paying for clicks that won't go on to convert. You do this by being highly honest and trusting that the right person is going to click. The Specifics Your headline, then, should be the part that grabs attention. But right away, you need to grab the attention of the right person. You can do this, for instance, with a rhetorical question. Are you trying to lose weight for summer? Or, do you love martial arts movies? This question instantly grabs attention, because the audience is being spoken to, and it qualifies who the ad is and isn't targeted at. In the text itself, your aim is to follow up on this, and that is where the actual persuasion takes place. Here, your aim is to try to outline the tangible benefits that come from using your product or service, but more importantly, you should describe the emotional benefits. For example, say goodbye to that stomach. Or, feel more confident in your clothes. For the martial arts products, your emotional hook might be the most incredible badass action ever in a movie. 
You can then either A, encourage a click-through by using a little mystery to pique the viewer's interest, or B, qualify your audience even more by warning that this is a paid product and those looking for something free need not click. This will likely depend on your objectives and your budget, which are considerations that should weigh into every decision you make as you design your ads. How to get free traffic from Quora questions and answers. There are plenty of different ways to get free traffic to your website, and a lot of strategies that come highly recommended by the most successful bloggers and webmasters. How do you choose? Simple. You don't. You do them all. If only a few work, then great. If they all work, then even better. You really have nothing to lose as long as you're always providing value and you never give Google a reason to think you're spamming or trying to manipulate the system. In this presentation, I'm going to give you one more simple strategy you can use. Answering questions on Quora. How it works. Quora is a site where users can ask questions and get answers. It works very similarly to Yahoo Answers. The good thing about that is that it allows anyone to post an answer and then displays that answer for everyone to read. The top answer will be the one that is rated as correct or as most useful. And this is where you come in as a webmaster or blogger. All you need to do is to post answers to questions and then follow up with a link to your website as the source or as a recommendation for further reading. The Benefits The great thing about this strategy is that it costs you nothing and requires very little time investment. Unlike writing a blog post, answering a question will take you just a few minutes at most, and you don't need to think about things like structure, phrasing, or formatting. Just write an honest answer and move on to the next one. Better yet, these answers actually hold a fair amount of sway with Google and will sometimes even rise to the top of Google's search results. That means you don't only get direct traffic from all the people on Quora who saw the answer, you also get it from anyone who searches a similar question on Google. If you answer a question that a lot of people have then, this can potentially result in a huge influx of direct traffic and a big boost to your SEO thanks to that link. How to get the most from Quora To get the most from this, you need to make sure that your answers are genuinely useful and accurate. That way, you will be most likely to be voted up, and you'll also be able to build your authority so that people start to think of you as someone who knows their stuff. And if there are no questions on any given day, just post a few of your own. How to get instant traffic with targeted Facebook ads. If you're hoping to get more visitors to your website, then there are plenty of different strategies you can use. From SEO to content marketing to social media marketing, you certainly aren't short of options. The only problem is that these strategies all take time. Meanwhile, Facebook ads provide a way you can start to get targeted traffic instantly as long as you know what you're doing. In this post, we'll unravel how it all works. Facebook Ads – The Basics The first thing to understand about Facebook ads is that this is a PPC platform. That stands for Pay Per Click, meaning, in other words, that as an advertiser, you will only be paying each time someone actually clicks on one of your ads. Often, this will cost anywhere from a few cents to a couple of dollars. As the advertiser, you can choose what you want your maximum bid or your maximum pay-per-click to be. This gives you the control to decide how much you want to pay for each visitor to your website. And what gives you even more control is the targeted nature of these ads. You can use the information provided to Facebook – age, sex, location, interests, job description, marital status – and use that in order to choose who you want your ads to show to, putting it all together. So using all this information, you can then create an advertising campaign that will be almost guaranteed to be profitable. If no one clicks on your ads, you don't pay anything. And if your ads have been perfectly targeted, then only people with a potential interest to buy will click on them. So let's say you have an ad banner showing on a random website. 
that might get 100 clicks, and 70 of those might be completely random and disinterested in your niche and your product. With the best attempt in the world, you can expect to persuade just a small percentage of them to buy from you. That means lots of wasted cash. But on Facebook, because you're only showing your product to the precise right demographic, your buyer persona, that means 100% of your viewers will already be likely to buy from you. And that means the same percentage of conversions translates to many more sales and much more money. So because you choose the maximum cost per click, you have the power to ensure that this equals solid profit. How to optimize your images for Google search traffic. When it comes to SEO, or search engine optimization, we often focus purely on written content and links. SEO is all about keywords and authority. So the way to boost your prevalence in Google search is to fill your site with relevant content and to get links from relevant influencers. That's all true, sure, but there is much more to SEO than just that. For example, there are many sites other than Google that you can optimize for, whether that's YouTube or Bing. At the same time, there are other aspects of your website that you can choose to optimize. Say, for example, your images. Chances are that at some point during your time on the web, you will have visited a website because of an image search. You might have searched for a key phrase in Google, clicked images, and then seen a whole section brought up. From there, perhaps you saw an image you liked the looks of, and so you clicked on it and were taken to the website. That, then, is precisely what we are trying to achieve when we optimize our images for search. And in many ways, that works in a very similar way to optimization for written content. As with written content, key words are of the utmost importance here. Only now, the key word isn't a part of the content, Google's optical character recognition isn't good enough to read from images yet, but rather, it surrounds it. The key, then, is to write around the subject matter as you embed your images. If the text on your page is well optimized, then the images will be more likely to come up in related searches. At the same time, though, you can also make sure that you use the right names for your images. That, of course, means using key words to name your files, which very easily identify the subject matter. Finally, though, you also need to optimize the images themselves. That doesn't mean you need to optimize the quality of the image, although this will help with the human element, but rather it means that you need to think about whether the image is original. A lot of the time, we use stock images, but unfortunately, these don't show up in Google often because they count as duplicate content. The key, then, is to modify any reused images in order to make them unique. The most common SEO mistakes and how to avoid them. Bad SEO is a painful thing to look at. It's so well-intentioned, and no doubt the site owner or blogger was certain at the time that what they were doing was going to boost their visibility and help them grow their business. And yet, bad SEO won't only fail to grow your business, it can actually hamper your chances of growth and success to a large degree and leave your site struggling to get noticed or even be penalized. In this post, we'll take a look at some of the most painful SEO mistakes and how you can avoid making them. Keyword Stuffing By far, this is the worst SEO mistake you will run into. We all know that SEO involves the use of keywords. Subtle repetition of certain phrases that you want to rank for is the best way to tell Google what your site is about and to show up in the right search results. The operative word there is subtle. Keyword stuffing means using keywords in such an aggressive manner that the content becomes unreadable. Ironically, this not only upsets the visitors, but it also actually hurts your ranking. It can even get you penalized. Always write for the reader first. Covering the site in ads. If your site is covered in ads, then this will hurt your SEO. 
Firstly, Google doesn't like to see more than two ads above the fold, and fewer is preferable. Furthermore, if your page is saturated with ads, then this will cause people to leave your site as soon as they land there, and a bad bounce rate, the proportion of people who spend less than a few seconds on your page, is one of the surest ways to show Google that people aren't engaging with your content. Not being natural. Using synonyms is more important than using the same keywords over and over again. That's even more important for your link building, where you should also aim to include words like click here in your anchor text. This looks more natural and organic, as does occasionally including your link in a less than perfect location. Google wants your link profile to look like it occurred naturally and without your intervention. So it can't all look perfectly pristine, or it will lose that edge. The very best links, for this reason, are the ones that are shared for you and without prompt. Top 5 Ways to Get Traffic to Your Website Need more traffic to your website? Putting in lots of time and effort and not seeing the returns in your web stats? Sometimes, the answer doesn't have to be complicated. Here are five free and very simple ways to increase traffic to your website instantly. 1. Be active in online communities. Number one is to be active in online communities. That could mean posting on Reddit, the appropriate subreddit for your niche, that is, or it could mean posting in forums. Either way, though, the key here is not to simply promote your site, but rather to become an active member of the community who people respect. 2. Answer questions. Answering questions on Yahoo Answers and Quora is one of the easiest and most effective free ways to get traffic to your site. Not only will you get direct visitors, but you will also benefit from raising your profile as an expert on the subject. 3. Guest post. One of the oldest but most effective ways to get free visitors to your website is to write guest posts. These are blog posts that will go on another website or blog. You offer the content for free, though, and in exchange, you ask for a link back to your site. Not only does this do a lot for your SEO, but it also creates direct traffic and acts as a referral that people trust. 4. Google+. Plus. Posting your content on Google Plus communities can be a very effective way to gain free visitors to your website. These communities are relatively low competition, but are seen by thousands of people. Not only that, but all the Plus ones you gain will help with your position in Google as well. Again, this method is more successful if you first take the time to build your reputation within that community. 5. Use free advertising. One last method to get free traffic is to sign up for Google AdSense and to use the initial free advertising budget you will be afforded. Usually, you will only get $50 to $100 to spend as a bonus, but if you're smart, you can get a surprisingly large amount of traffic that way, which can lead to even more visitors if you play your cards right. These are just a few of the ways you can get free visitors to your website, showing that sometimes it just takes a little creativity. 5 Top Methods to Getting Targeted Traffic on a Budget Looking to get more traffic to your website, but don't have a ton of cash to spend on it? The good news is that there are plenty of options, and in fact, getting targeted traffic can even be completely free. In this presentation, we're going to take a look at some of the best ways to get more traffic in terms of cost-effectiveness, so, let's get started. 1. PPC PPC is pay per click. This is a form of advertising that only costs you when someone clicks on the ad. Examples include Facebook ads and Google AdWords. In both cases, you get to set not only a maximum budget, but also a maximum amount you're willing to pay per click. Both these controls let you carefully manage your budget, and in turn, that makes them suitable for those with a little less to spend. 2. Influencer Marketing Whether it is guest posting, ad swapping, or YouTube shoutouts, 
Influencer marketing means swapping links with people who have their own audience. You both benefit, but no money needs to exchange hands. 3. Answering questions on Quora. Want to easily get your link seen by hundreds or even thousands of visitors? Just answer a few questions on Quora. Quora also ranks highly on Google, particularly for searches that are phrased like questions. It might just be an easier way to get your brand to the top of the SERPs. 4. Reddit. Reddit is a very powerful resource for marketers who know how to make the most of it. You can either use this just like Quora, by posting answers, or you can use it as a place to share links with an audience you know will be interested in your posts. Whatever you do, the key to success is to first build some relationships in that subreddit. This way, people will know you and respect you when you post, and might even go out of their way to help you succeed. That is, as opposed to downvoting you and having your post removed for being spammy. 5. Link baiting. The very best links are the ones that look natural, meaning that they look as though they were shared by other users. And the best way to achieve this effect? That would be to build links that genuinely are natural. And the best way to do that is to create content that people just can't help but want to share with others. 5 Ways to Ensure Your Content is Socially Shareable Want to build a big and highly effective links profile? The best way to do that is to let your audience build it for you. That way, it will look inherently natural to Google, and it will proliferate through real networks of people with similar interests. But just how do you go about writing a post if you want to ensure people will share it? You're in the right place. In this presentation, we're going to explore exactly that. 1. Build a resource. If you can create a comprehensive resource that teaches a subject, then you will get links from people who want to teach a topic. This is often referred to as a resource post, and the idea is that when someone is discussing how to do something, or when someone asks a community how to go about something, your link will then be referenced as a starting point. It takes time and effort, but these can be perfect link bait. 2. Shareable titles. Speaking of bait, the right title can do a lot for your performance on social media and increase your chances of getting shared. This is, of course, what is known as clickbait, but there's no need to go that far. Just make sure that your title captures attention and is interesting enough to gain some clicks on its own strengths. 3. Write for a specific person. Remember, social media is primarily about communication. That is to say that we post on Facebook or Twitter usually because we want to say something to someone or about ourselves. For example, one reason we often share things on Facebook is because of what that says about us. We share things that we associate with, to tell our friends a little about who we are. The other reason we share is because we think someone will like a specific post, and we want to let them know we're thinking of them. In both cases, it pays to write for a specific person, and not be so broad that you don't appeal to anyone in particular. 4. Be a little opinionated. People love to argue on Facebook and Twitter, and the sad fact is that controversy sells. Don't be obscene, of course, but don't be afraid to be a little controversial either. If someone shares your post because they disagree with it, that's still a share. 5. Add social sharing buttons. And finally, the easiest way of all is just to include social sharing buttons on your site. Let visitors share your content with one click and they'll be much more likely to do just that. What is retargeting and why should you be using it? As you begin to become more experienced in internet marketing and you start to explore more options, you'll begin to discover some more advanced techniques and strategies that you can use to accelerate your growth. One of the most successful of these is retargeting. This can be highly effective if you know how to use it. And in this presentation, that's precisely what you're going to learn. What is retargeting? Retargeting is a term that is usually used in relation to PPC, 
pay-per-click advertising. That means Facebook ads, and it means Google AdWords and AdSense. Both these platforms allow you to target whom you show your ads to, ensuring that you're not paying to display ads to people who are unlikely to be interested in visiting your page or buying from you. Facebook does this by letting you target by demographic and by interest, based on the information that the user gave the network. Google, meanwhile, does this by letting you target based on search term, from which you can infer interest and intent. Retargeting takes this one step further. By using cookies stored on the visitor's computer, it allows you to show ads only to visitors who have previously been to your site and previously looked at your products. This, in turn, greatly increases the likelihood that they might be interested in what you have to sell. Why it works. Retargeting is very powerful because people who have been to your page before and looked at your products were possibly considering buying from you. You can not only choose to show your ad to previous visitors to your site, but to previous visitors of specific pages. If you have ever thought of buying something, you may have found that you ended up talking yourself out of it. Perhaps you didn't have the money, or perhaps you didn't really need it. Either way, logic prevailed over impulse and emotion. But then imagine it's evening. You're feeling tired and your resolve is weak. Maybe you've had a hard day and you feel like you deserve a treat. And then you see that same product you considered appear. Maybe now with a limited time discount. Did you know that we're statistically more likely to buy when we're tired? You can imagine the impact this could have. And right there is the power of remarketing.